Good morning, Kishore. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Okay. I'm Joe Salter, and I'm interviewing Kishore Shah, who is the founder of Cardi London for Ethical Brands for Fashion Revolution 2020. So, Kishore, I want to first ask you the big question: What is Cardi? That's a difficult one to answer because uh, you know, for me, initially it was just hand spun, hand woven fabrics. Um, but I came right, right from the beginning, I came across different techniques for spinning, right from one spindle, just a spindle without any support. So there'd be people walking around and uh, spinning on a spindle. So it was that basic. And in the same place, I came across much more modern kind of spinning wheels, mini models of what's that, what you see in the mills. Uh, what to call it, uh, and uh, so you know, you had a wide range of technology when I got introduced to Kadi right there. So for me, Kadi is not not just hand spinning. It's more about where it's spun, who is in control of the spinning, who is in control of the equipment, and how does it relate to the community? So it's a, does... it's a fabric. It's a fabric hand hand spun, but it can be spun just one spindle or all sorts of size, huge sizes. Yeah, and all sorts of techniques. I mean, just, just a spindle mm. or a spindle attached to a spinning machine called and a jerker. And it's taking or, the base, taking the, taking the base fiber of whatever yeah, it is and yeah. turning it into yarn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a ring frame technology, which is now used more, more in car. This is, that's, that's the adaptation of the modern spinning mills in a mini scale. So I think it's that mini scale which is important to me. There is something which can be done locally, especially if it can be done where the cotton is produced. It yes, yes, that's true. Locating yeah. locating the growing fiber yeah. with where the production yeah. of turning it into yeah. a yarn. And, 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 and I, mean, I just discovered recently that that has a very distinct advantage to it, because if you bale cotton, which is mostly done now, is you bale the cotton, send it to spinning mills, or either in, within India or abroad. But once you bail it, you compress the fibers and it loses some of the quality. Ah. But if you're not bailing it, if you're spinning right where the, or near where the cotton is produced, then you're, you're, you're retaining that you know, very, the quality of the fiber, which is, makes it more aerated, more breathable, softer. Uh, so that's, I think that's important that if you can do the spinning, do the the whole processing right? Uh, the making the slivers which is required for the spinning, where the cotton is produced, and that's actually better yeah. for the community as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because you're so creating the value is added where, where the farming is done. Mm. And yeah, so the farmers, mm. spinners, weavers, all co co located yeah, in it, and then the farmers can also be spinners. Yes, and true. Yeah, and, and that's spinners. one very important. There's a very important gentleman um, in India's history who. Uh, promoted all of this local rural work, isn't there? Yeah, uh, nothing ever been about in his Gandhi, but Gandhi. he was supported by a lot of other people. It wasn't just him. No. When you first yeah. started looking at Kadi, you know, hand spinning had disappeared from India. It had been taken over by mills, you know, either in UK or increasingly within India. So it was difficult. There were handloom weavers, a lot of them, but they 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 preferred to get the Mill spun yarn because it was finer. Mm. They found it easier to weave it. And uh, spinning had pretty much disappeared from Indian villages. Yeah, Which is interesting. For, Carry on. Uh, especially for cotton. The world that was still around. So he had to go searching for somebody who could teach how to spin. But part of that, that issue, I mean, part that's very deeply linked in with Indian independence, isn't it? Because the yeah, cotton yeah. was being brought to the UK because at that point India was part of the um, British Empire, Empire, and then the people in India were not able to process their own the own cotton that they grew. Yeah. And, 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 and Indian village economy was pretty much at that time, um, you know, it was very integrated. So you had farming, and when you were not farming, you had other industries. Textile was an important one, but there are things like pottery metalwork, uh, I think those are the two main ones, metalwork required for farming, especially making agriculture implements. Uh, and you had uh, leather work, 
So all that was an integrated kind of an economy, rural economy that got broken down. Mm. Take, it, take, take the link away and then, then it's yeah. gone, isn't it? Um, and that is responsible, a lot of migration taking place from India. I mean, I, I think, because when I went to my grandfather's village, I could see that there was a very vibrant textile industry. There, there used to be a printer's community, uh, which was no longer there. Mm. Uh, I, I, that probably was spinning, which, was, which, which disappeared a long time ago. And so that one part of the economy being broken, you know, the rural economy is not, no longer that viable. So yeah, people had to the whole. Yeah. So my a lot of people from my village left either for either for Bombay or went to East Africa, and my father migrated to East Africa for that. Mm. I think there's a whole chain of effect this yeah can breaking up the. So I think Gandhi could see that if we can bring that back, you, you could mitigate not just mitigate, you could build up a different kind of an economy, and also a different kind of a polity. Yes. And that's one part of Gandhi which is less well known. I mean, he's known for his protests and his uh, past, but it, very people will know about this background work, which was the base. I mean, without that, he couldn't have carried the masses. Yeah, the whole rural, rebuilding the rural economy yeah. was really so important. So it, it had been building a rural organization in rural areas also. Yes, yeah, so, so the Indian flag, for example, has a spinning wheel on because it's such yeah. a key part of Indian culture, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying before when it cut off, because I don't have the Indian heritage and I'm looking at it from the outside, you, mm -hmm. you see the cotton part, but then having that spinning wheel and that whole um, infrastructure around cotton processing, so important. No, but also, I mean, the, the books which I looked into, how, uh, you know, Kadi, also had in making an Indian national identity because it, 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 it kind of democratized the, the dressing pattern. Yes, it moved, away from, it moved away both from the traditional, very high, high kind of dressing. So the kind of turban you had signified who you were. And you could, but, so that's why Gandhi came up with this idea of a Gandhi cap, the Gandhi top. Yeah. Uh, it took a lot of research going to find what the right one was. Uh, and, interesting. and even in terms of the kind of dresses, so you have this uh, kutta pajama, which is very democratic. So, and, and so then people had a choice not to be traditional, not to be colonial, something which was very powerful symbol of the national, national mm -hmm. their identity. Yes, national identity without yeah. sort of levels in the same yeah. way. But why, why is Cardi important to you? And just very quickly. Oh, I think it's because I'm in. I went to India in search of something after spending four years in the 60s in a US campus, which was very radical, which changed me. But then I needed to look for an alternative which would work for me. And I went to India, it was the first time I went there. And uh, I discovered this movement, which was you know, founded by one of Gandhi's uh, successors, Vinoba, and that really emphasized on the rural a quality in the rural economy and Kadi was an important part of it. Mm, That's where I got my foundation working in villages in Bihar as a part of that moment. So uh, you started up Kadi London. Tell us about Kadi London. So that was, I mean, between that moment and starting Kadi London, I, I worked a lot in what's called sustainable development. So helping uh, state governments in India work with communities and mostly being funded by international agencies. So it was all a part of what's called the sustainable development uh, agenda of the 80s and 90s. Uh, but somewhere I felt, and I, I mean, I, I was bringing my values, which are my Gandhian values into that work. But I felt at one point that you need, I needed to go back to the basics and see, you know, sustainability was about sustainability, but it wasn't about, not that strongly about empowering the community about bringing all the production systems down to where you were, rather than you know such an emphasis on global. You could balance the two. Global is important, but unless you have a very strong base, global can go out of control. Uh, and I felt that this where I needed to. And somewhere then, Kadi came up as one of the things we could do it with. Also, I was getting more in search of a non-violent society. 
And again, I felt that Kali could be a part of that as a symbol. It's not just about the fabric, it's about production systems, whether it's agriculture with other manufacturing things. How can you bring it down? So Kali is a movement. Yeah. A movement for, I call it the 3Ds. Mm. Decentralized system, decentralized, diverse, and democratic productions. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, it could be for textiles. It could be for agriculture. It could be for, uh, you know, making computers. Also, why not? Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Cardi London, uh, Cardi London, um, was obviously based in the UK, and yeah. um, I'm in part of it as well. I'm very passionate about Cardi London myself. So, what? Um, just tell everybody in a nutshell what. Cardi London does? Uh, we started with the idea of selling clothes import, uh, supplied from imported from India, but then we found that there was a big interest in the fabric itself, the designers, they found, especially the young ethically conscious designers. So that's where we started focusing on helping those young ethical fashion designers and brands source Cardi from India. Um, one of the things we found was that there was big demand for organic. I myself we live in organic cotton, but there was very little organic khadi available. So we we found some. I mean, think you know about Kapil and Meda. We've been working with that, but we found others also working with organic khadi. But more more than that, we found the hand woven organic was more easily available. Okay, and then we found a couple of organizations who worked with that. So it was a search. Well, you know, while we tried to help the designers, it helped us find out more about our supply chain and find sources which we could, you know, which are aligned to our values. Because uh, I found a lot of the big Kali organizations had become centralized, which went counter to what I believe in. So we were able to find smaller ones, or at least bigger ones who believed in that kind of chain process. So, so um, it's the fabric is one part mm -hmm. of it, but I know because it Cardi London is a community interest company. Yes. You've also got a very big um, drive towards inspiring people and educating people as yeah. well. So how do you do that? Uh, in two ways. And one is we do it in, in India through our supply chain. So there's a lot of interaction with our suppliers. There's a lot of discussion about quality control, uh, especially for, you know both for domestic market but also for international market. Uh, I think quality control and things like dyes is very important. And the cardio organization, some of them are becoming conscious, are adapting to more you know, better con policies for using the dyes. Either use can not using any chemical dye if they have to, they just using ISO free and moving more towards natural dyes. So those kind of issues we've been working with. And also issues like you know, what's the appropriate technology? Is it the one spindle? Or is it something you know, solar powered larger mm. uh, spinning wheels, which can be done in villages? I know that's a big question, isn't it? Yeah. When does yeah. when does um, hand powered stop being hand powered? If you use solar power, does it count yeah. as hand powered? I know that's for a big me, discussion. It's not hand power is not the important part. It's no, it's the local production, local, local production, uh, local yeah. control. People getting more benefit. The people are making the yeah. the part of benefit. Playing a big role in management. But you also do quite a lot with um, universities in the UK, yeah. don't you? So in the UK, we, we started with an event, uh, five, or five organizations, including us, uh, got together and uh, just to get to people to know about Cardio. And that started up a whole process of we've been having more events, making it wider. You know, Cardio is not just about fabric from India. How can we have similar concept in UK? Using fibers made, you know, produced in UK, like wool, hemp, and flax, natural. Uh, so that's that's a spin-off that has come up. So we're involved in that that process also, but also much more involved in you know working with universities, both fashion schools and UCL. You know, they've worked in a lot of work with them, uh, with the student groups who do quite a consultancy project. As a part of the course, yeah, so we've had UCL involved <laughs> in quite a few of our events, haven't we? Yeah, yeah and yeah. then we've had um, we've been talking to Chelsea. Yeah, College, we, we? we're doing they've done a Cardi project now, which has been delayed because of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, coronavirus. 
you know, and then uh, we, are, we are also trying to build up with Goldsmith College. And Goldsmith, yeah. There. yeah. So we're part of a business development project that they're organizing. So we know that Cardi can make positive change, is making positive change mm. for the people in the communities, the farmers and the spinners and the weavers. We know that Cardi um, is a very environmentally positive fabric as well and movement. What does it offer to consumers? Uh, it's a very good fabric. People who like it fall in love with it. I have. One of the reasons why we started Cardi was I was missing my Cardi here in the UK. Uh, it's it's healthy, it's breathable. It's it's something which you know you're very clear about where the supply could be, I and mean, it's not always the case. But you couldn't have a very clear supply chain for it. You know the communities that you're supporting when you're wearing Cardi. Uh, it's uh, I mean it's if it's a good Cardi, it's a, it's good for the summer, it's good for the winter, it's, it's because it's again because it's very breathable, so it insulates you in, in both seasons. It works mm. both very ways. comfortable, very yeah, comfortable, yeah. and very natural feeling yeah. fabric as well, isn't it? Because it hasn't been treated with yeah. all the chemicals, and especially and if you can get the cardi which has been made low, no, mm. the processing has been done locally. And yeah. that. Uh, I think there's an emotional yeah. connection. I know, I know for me and for my customers, where does it come from? Because we use a lot of Cardi. It's, there's an emotional connection, isn't there? Because yeah. they understand the history. It's not mm. the same as when you just go and buy something from a shop and you have no mm. idea. They understand. And so there's that deeper connection with that. Um, okay, so there's only one more question now, which is, where are you going to go next? What's going to happen next with Cardi and Cardi London? Uh, I think we're trying to, I mean, we've been working with a select number of customers. So that we're doing two things. One is expand that base through the internet. So we're getting our own collections, which we start selling samples of and move more and more online as we can, as much as we can. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we are going more into products, very simple products, like uh, bags and t-shirts, um, t-shirts made with organic knitwear, Kadi knitwear, which is very rare to find, but we found sources for that. And uh, and we've just been thinking about in the current environment, maybe Kati could make people in India say they make very good face masks. Mm. So yeah, maybe, with, with um, coronavirus yeah. face masks, hopefully will be a and yeah. having a natural organic face mask. But you know, using the proper filters so with the, yeah proper. medical filters, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Make sure that that all, all of that is in place. So Marcus, and we've been we've been talking about yoga wear as well, haven't we? Yeah, yoga wear is the other one. It fits very well with the ethos and, and it's very comfortable. Mm. Uh, for yoga, you can have yoga mats made with Kadi. You can have uh, yoga kit bags made with Kadi. Yeah. You can have yoga wear. It yeah. can be a whole range of things. Mm. So we're not, I mean, we're not designers. So we depend on the designers for the set to work with for the more fancy stuff. But I think this is an area where we can move into and which has a market. Okay, brilliant. I'm looking forward to being mm -hmm. part of it. Um, and the um, other thing is, you know, working with our suppliers to develop quality metrics and how they can, what they look at different areas of quality, where the fit in. And once they've done that, we can work with them or they can work within the, you know, amongst themselves to see how they could move forward and improve that quality. Continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quality controls a really yeah. important one. And okay. Impact. An impact assessment is another one. Yes. yes. Well, impact assessment. Yes. Where, where yeah. are you doing the good? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. That's fantastic, Kishore. Yeah. Um, I'm, as you know, a very big fan of Cardi London. Yeah. So if anyone wants to find out about Cardi London, there's a wonderful website at www.cardi London. So you can get Kate. Cardi dot London. So it's K A H A D I dot London. So you can find yeah. out much more about what Kishore and the team are doing there. So. First of all, the last thing I want to say is thank you very much and um, have a wonderful day. And we'll be hearing a lot thank more you. about Cardi. Thank you. And I wish you success with the event.